As an 18-year-old industrial engineering major, I never would have imagined that my choice of dorm would become the most significant decision in my life. My university had a residential college system, and this gathered students in multiple majors under a thematic living learning environment, things like commerce and industry, engineering, uh, fine arts, and my choice, which was communications. And I can remember going through the dorm catalog, the housing catalog for the first time, and seeing the amazing equipment that was available uh, through this dorm. Things like film and video uh, cameras, editing suites, lights, computers, and even an in-dorm radio station. So when I got to school, I realized that while the equipment was fantastic, it was more so the people that were making the magic. I was one of a handful of tech majors interspersed amongst journalists, filmmakers, musicians, and actors. And they all had a spirit that anything was possible. And indeed, as I found out, anything was possible. I could have an idea, walk out in the hall, gather a team of collaborators, head to the basement, get the equipment, go out, shoot my project, and the next night screen it to a gathering of friends. And this was a magical, magical thing. So, after about six months, I abandoned my engineering pursuits and focused on a future in film. And for the next three and a half years, I was living in my utopia. When we think about the creative spark, the first thing our minds turn to is our minds. Creativity is a core, a cognitive process, and most of our ideas don't make it past the filter within our heads. And this is particularly a problem when it's not that our ideas get stuck because they're a bad idea. They might be the greatest idea ever, but because we do not know how to bring them to fruition, we do not see a path to their fulfillment. So the key here is how do we overcome this? Because until we overcome this, the ideas get lost in our, in our own heads and they build up and you probably have experienced this where you've got a great idea for something and it could change your life, but it's still on the shelf or it's still back in your distance somewhere. And if you can imagine how many of those that you might have had yourself and look around you and even in this room and the treasure that could have come at this time. So whenever one of our ideas doesn't make it, then we lose out and our society loses out. So the greatest thing that we can do with our ideas, the next step, is to share them, to bring them out into society because the sparks ignite there. One of the greatest gifts that I can imagine having, and one that I get every day, is being able to have avenues to share my ideas and trusted others who I can bring them to and have them refine them and give me feedback and maybe participate in them. So if we think of the social sphere as an arena in which our ideas can, our inspiration can come to the, to the table, but also it is a place where we can get collaborators and we can get feedback and all that other magic thing. And so whatever we can do to trigger sparks and make that social arena work for us is a very good thing. Now the problem is that most of our social arena, most of where we go for this is the workplace. But the workplace is changing. We do not count on, or we cannot count on, um, the secure, long-term employment that we once were able to do. And so we're now vulnerable to an over-reliance on a system that's not really going to work for us anymore. And so I'm wondering, what can we do to trigger? Where can we find other arenas that can bring these ideas to fruition and make things possible that we never thought were possible. 
And for that, I turned back to my utopia, my dorm. And I found four key components that I really felt made that work. Actually, I found three key components, but I realized I should probably have a P there, too. So, <laughs> so. <laughs> and speaking of that P, <laughs> people. The people were the key from, from a wide variety of backgrounds and a wide variety of roles. <laughs> Next was access, not just to those people, but to the facilities and the equipment and other resources right at your fingertips. They were there for the taking. Then we have structure. And I'm talking here about an established framework that brought us into contact with regular opportunities for social events, educational events, uh, chances to exhibit and learn leadership, and a bunch of other skills. And the best thing about this framework was not so much that it was there, but that it was flexible, that we could do something to change it, that we were empowered. And when you did that, you really felt like you were something, you know, that anything was possible here. And so the final thing here is spirit, a platform for positive interaction in which everybody wanted to chip in and make the magic possible for each other. So you can imagine that having experienced this for as long as I did, think and getting out of college, and like many of you, you get out into the world, and the world's not ready for you yet. And I tell you, I felt like Wile E. Coyote, and I'm running out there, and <laughs> I'm just pausing, and I look down, and there's no social structural support. And so this was a problem, and after a period of Two years of a combination of odd jobs and no jobs, I succumbed to my pragmatic side, and I went to graduate school. <laughs> and here, I discovered the magic elixir of sociology. So, what better place for me to be in graduate school, I found out, than Nashville, Tennessee. Here, I was surrounded by people much like myself, striving musicians in pursuit of their calling with a deep passion and conviction for what they were doing. And I wondered, how were they able to keep going despite the lack of structural support? What did they do to make it work for them? And so this became the focus of my studies. And I looked at the cognitive strategies in play, and I also looked at the social forces and the different elements that were all coming together and working to, um, to make them work as they did. And in examining this and understanding it more, it empowered me and emboldened me. And within short order, I abandoned my dissertation halfway through it, and I moved back to Florida, and I made a feature film. <laughs> and as an aside, that was right, some of that was right here in this building. <laughs> Just incredible. So the best thing here about the feature film is that I spent the next few years gathering together a community of collaborators. And I loved this experience. It rekindled the whole spirit of my dorm. And I was back in Utopia again. And when it was over, the first thing I could think about was how do I keep this going? What can I do? Not only to sustain it for myself, but to think the hundreds of collaborators who helped me get to my dream. And so I came up with an idea for a physical place, a creative community hub that would connect creators, it would connect uh, ideas, projects, resources, venues, bring everything together in a way that accelerated project development and allowed people to shine, to showcase what they were doing and make all that magic happen in our community. So this was my, what I set out to do, and I thought, you know, what better place to do this than Orlando? Here we are in a city that was still searching for its identity, wanting to be the next Hollywood, the next Austin, and different things like that, but it had the opportunity to be the first Orlando. Here we were, this is a city that was founded on creativity, so what better place 
than here. And so I went out into the world, sparks flying, but the world wasn't ready for me yet. <laughs> so, so six years passed. And in those six years, I gathered data and experiences as both an entrepreneur and an educator. Meanwhile, society was changing, and the, the work structure was continuing to shift. And you had the rise of independent workers who were coming together and finding ways to solve their own problems and sharing resources and sharing workspace. And this gave birth to the co-working movement. So this was going on, and then we had our beloved economy and what was happening there. And so one of the victims of this economy was a, an independent bookstore in the heart of Orlando. It had been in operation for 10 years. And fortunately, it had a forward-looking landlord who wanted to keep the space as a community space. More fortunately for me, I had shared my idea with a friend who took the time to listen and connect me, and the seed was planted. And before too long, Urban Rethink, after a year, um, was born. So, now this happened. And the key thing then was people don't understand what this is. How do I explain it? And I had to go back to my good friend sociology. And one of my favorite theories, which was social movement theory, in social movement theory, there is a term called opportunity structure, the opportunity structure. And it basically talks about the factors that limit and enable collective action for people. So here we're talking about social, uh, opportunity structure as conditions. And what I wanted to do was change it around and make it apply to an entity, an opportunity structure a flexible flame framework for collective engagement. I was building an opportunity structure. I was recreating my dorm. And I was doing this in a way that synthesized my entire path from that dorm, through filmmaking, sociology, and everything else. It all came together and worked that this is the culmination of all those efforts. And want people wondering, why the hell are you, you know, you're a filmmaker, a social, how does all this work? Here's how it works. So, as I look to building an opportunity structure, Urban Rethink is one of those. And so what is Urban Rethink? Well, it is a flexible framework. It is a living creative, uh, living creative space for incubating initiatives. And by day, we have a number of co-workers of people that are using the space as a shared work facility and having a platform for business development there. At night, we have cultural events. In the eight months since we've been open, we've had about 150 of these. And they've ranged anything from fashion shows to alternative mes medicine workshops. So what it is, amongst other things, is evolving. It continues to evolve with what the community wants and needs. And as I thought about it, I wondered, you know, this, if, if I'm labeling this as an opportunity structure, what else is out there that might qualify, you know, put under the same tent and the same umbrella? And I thought about spaces that were physical in nature, but also spaces that were based online. And in fact, we're experiencing one of these things right now. So, one of the things that all of these have in common is that the incentive to participate is not primarily financial. It's purposeful. It's not market driven, but it might be market driving. And that's the excitement of it. So coming back to the idea of my first idea about the Creative Community Hub. I thought that it would be a great thing, that it would be a bonus for my community, 
and something that would allow people to be showcased and celebrate what's going on and have fun and all that. But then I realized that in the time since, this has moved from a need into, uh, from a want into a need, an urgent and growing need. We can take a look around and if we think that the long-term secure jobs of the past are gonna be coming back by the thousands to rescue us, my fear is that we're sadly mistaken. So how do we go about going the right way? How do we, how do we make this happen? Once we understand the power of the social arenas, we can use that. We can take the ideas from, uh, we could fan the flames and ignite the fires and take the idea from if, if I only had this, I could do that, to I know how to get that. I can help you get that. I value it and let's make it happen. Let's take a claim to our social arenas and repurpose them as opportunity structures. Let's build that magic from that platform and fulfill our curiosities, share our strengths with others, have the courage and the whimsy to try a new endeavor, and together, collectively and individually, seize every opportunity to shine who we are. Thank you.